Hey gang, Tim here, Tim back, episode 1919, Idol. Thank you for your patience, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, really excited to tell you about what's been going on over the past two and a half weeks, and I can't wait to let you into my world, and that's what a part of the show is about, to let you know what I am, I'm doing and let you know what, what, what my life's about, and I uh, call it a coincidence, but it's perfect that this show is centered around mental health so welcome back i hope you got a chance to catch up on the show in my absence and i hope you got a chance to just do some things that you felt like were fun you know i would love to hear what you guys have been up to over the past two and a half weeks or so and uh expect uh me to come back full force i can't wait to really dive into so many new ideas that i've had and there are always cons to being away for a bit, but there are some pros too. I got a chance to brainstorm, got a chance to reflect, got a chance to talk to a lot of close friends. And I realized that, yes, this is something that I want to do for the rest of my life. And this is something that I want to uh, make a huge deal out of. So episode 19, turning point for me. And uh, definitely, uh, I guess you could say, strengthen my resolve so to speak. So I'm glad to be back with you all. Again, thank you for your patience. Sorry for the wait. And without further ado, let's dive right into it. So not too many topics are going to be covered this week. I just want to give you an insight onto my absence. And I just want to give you an insight uh, into why this is so important. So uh, this episode is centered around mental health. And the reason that that's so important is we oftentimes hear about a lot of, especially celebrities, right? Um, suicides and a lot of people checking themselves into uh, rehab or mental institutions uh, because of so much stress that they're going through. And I wanted to really, really dig deep into this episode because you never know. You hear the phrase, you never know, right? You hear the phrase, you never know what people are experiencing. You never know what type of stress that they're going through. You never know, right? And it's almost kind of like an empty phrase until you come across somebody who you found, who you find out uh, they're really dealing with something and you have no idea and they come and either confide in you or you hear it through a third party. And you, and then that, while that phrase comes back around full circle, right? And the first thought you thought you think of is, wow, I didn't know. So uh, me personally, just to share with you guys, I went through, um, some mental struggles, so to speak, some work related mental struggles and was dealing with a lot at work and even got to the point where uh, at one period I walked out of work, which if anyone knows me, well enough know that I would never do. Uh, well, never say never. And the mind is a powerful thing. And uh, I'm dealing with some things at work that I don't really want to talk to you all about. And the biggest reason for that is not because you guys aren't my friends. It's mainly because a lot of my coworkers, a lot of people at the job actually do listen to the show. And I try my best not to com combine work with a hobby. And I never really want this to become a launching pad for me to criticize and critique coworkers and, and, and policies at work and things of that nature. So if you're really curious, I'd love to share my experience with you. Just reach out to me offline, shoot me a text, call me, email me, whatever you want to do. Uh, and, you know, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be more than happy to, to talk to you about what's been going on. And maybe you can give me some advice on how to deal with it. But I walked out at work I needed like a, a 30, 45 minute break. I call I called the old mentor of mine and he was able to share some light and some some insight on my way of thinking. And he really helped confirm one of the, my core beliefs and that's learning and development. So uh, more news to come in that area in a bit. But just to stay on topic here, I uh, just almost had a mental breakdown. You know, I just couldn't take it anymore. And I really debated on like if I was even going to come back, but I went back, I still have a job. Um, luckily, uh, my leadership team was able to work with me there and uh, I still have a job. And uh, it was definitely a difficult period. Now, my job has an employee assistance program. And I'm going to really, really dive deep into this because I want you all to really take advantage of your jobs 
employee assistance program. So my job has an employee assistance program. It's pretty cool. It offers uh, guidance and resources in areas that you uh, may have an interest in, but you don't know where to start. Things like mental health and counseling for work-related, life-related, family-related issues. Things like financial assistance, where to go to find that at. Things like about continuing and furthering your education. A lot of us want to do that. We don't know where to get started. Uh, I think as adults, and I'm just going to branch off a little tiny bit here. I think as adults, uh, we get stuck in this trap of not knowing what we don't know. Things like insurance, things like taxes, things like even getting our kids into school. And we're kind of thrown into the fire because we don't learn this stuff from anywhere, right? If our parents aren't around or if our parents are kind of doing their own thing, uh, our parents don't te teach us. And sometimes they don't think to teach us, right? Um, and there's no class in school to, to figure this stuff out. You kind of got to go to a friend or uh, a family member like, hey, um, I'm trying to get my kid in school or, hey, I'm trying to take out an insurance policy or, hey, I have three different insurance policies to choose from. I don't know which one to pick. Hey, what exactly is life insurance? We're kind of expected to just know these things. And we kind of get ridiculed and criticized if we go and ask certain people about the question. It's almost kind of like black people with spades, right? If you don't know how to play spades and you want to learn how to play spades, you go to a black person, hey, how do you play spades? And they sit here and really, what? You don't know how to play spades? And they talk about how you don't know how to play spades instead of teaching you how to play spades. After you already admit it that you don't know how to play spades, right? So it's the same topic right there, right? The same effect. So just coming back to the topic, coming back to the employee assistance program, um, it's a really cool resource, a really cool starting point, a launching pad for um, a lot of cool resources that you may be interested in, but you don't know where to go. Uh, so one of those things for me was mental health. Uh, they offer counseling. And not only do they offer counseling, they point you in the right direction, and they pay for the sessions up to a certain point. So the job pays for that. So, hey, if you're going, let me be very, very clear, because I had no idea that I was going through what I was going through. Uh, you figured I'd be the first person to know, uh, first person to know, but abs I absolutely wasn't. So I just want to uh, speak to everybody out there, and then I'm going to speak to the men specifically in a bit. But I want to speak to everybody out there. You may think you have it under control, and if you do, great. If you have a great support network, awesome but these things these programs exist for people like you and i who do not know where to turn who may or maybe you feel like the people in your network the people in your life you can't talk to them about it because they might be biased or because they're family members so they're not going to hurt your feelings or no one's going to be objective you know there, there are a lot of things going on surrounding why why you may feel like hey my support network they're here maybe they can help me out with cars and money and relationship trouble but work related issues you can't really deal with. And maybe you feel like, you know, a lot of the people in your life don't deal with what you deal with. You know, again, you don't know until you ask, but at the same time, I think it's important to get a professional, objective third party who can come in and look at it and they have no vested interest in you and they can tell you like it is because at the end of the day, uh, they don't have to worry about hurting your feelings. So um, I think it's really important for you to take advantage. So talk to your job, talk to your career, talk to whatever programs or parties you're involved with and see if you have an employee assistance program. Odds are you do and take advantage of it. Hell, you may have relationship trouble or you may have questions like, hey, why can't I never save money? Why do I always want to do things financially, but I'm never financially prepared or financially disciplined? Why can't I find a, a good man or a good woman to be with? Why do all my relationships end a certain way? Why, 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 why? You don't have the answer to, to these questions. Seek out a professional who may be able to help you out um, or in some cases, definitely be able to help you out. So um, I actually have an appointment set up for Monday. It's my first counseling, se counseling session. I've never done anything like this before, and I'm really excited. I'm nervous. I'm anxious, and um, I can't wait, but at the same time, I'm, I'm almost a little scared on some of the things I might find out about myself, but I think no knowledge is bad knowledge, and I'm really excited to dive into it. So hopefully, hopefully, I can maintain my appointment on Monday. Um, I've requested a modified shift so I could go there on Monday, so hopefully... I'll be able to go on Monday. And a lot of you guys are probably thinking like, wow, Tim, this is really private, sensitive information. Why are you sharing this? Your coworkers are going to know. People are going to know. Because I'm not ashamed. Um, and talking with a few people, some of them being the guests on this show uh, that I'll talk about in a bit, uh, they, you know, they helped me to understand that 
there's no shame in, 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 in my game. You know, there's no shame in being, um, mentally unstable in some areas. There's, there's no shame in, um, you know, needing some help, uh, when it comes to having an outlet to release some mental stress. Uh, oops, sorry guys, forgot to put my phone on silent here. Uh, don't need you guys hearing that buzz out. And I'm going to leave that in too, you know, leave that in, let you know that some bloops, some blips do happen during the recording of the show. Um, so I'm going to leave that in. But anyway, um, did the, my friends talk about having a good support network. They told me they're like, hey, I, you know, they've had issues in the past and some of them even shared some very personal issues in the interviews that you'll hear in a bit. Uh, so it got me to thinking like, hey, you know, why not share with you all? You all are in a way my extended family. Some of you I know very, very well. Some of you are the only thing that separates us is, is blood type and other people. I may have just met you this year or this month even. Who who knows? Maybe even this week. Maybe I haven't even met you yet at all. So uh, I just wanted to let you all know that you know mental health is a real deal. Um, it's 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 about time that we stop hearing about it whenever uh, a celebrity commits suicide, and it's about time that we start talking about it now before stuff like that happens. So I just wanted to dive into that. So you'll hear about the interviews very very shortly. Uh, but before I do, I just want to give you uh, some, a heads up. So I would like to take this moment to announce the winner of the Idol gift card giveaway. So first and foremost, thank you to everyone who participated so far. And I appreciate all of the text messages, the Facebook messages, the Instagram messages, the email, everything that I've gotten so far surrounding the Idol gift card giveaway. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for participating. Uh, but I want to announce the winner of the Idol gift card giveaway, and that's Anthony. So Anthony doesn't know yet, so uh, I'll I'll be calling him once this recording is over and let him know, and maybe I'll even have him on the show next week to to uh, 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 express his joy on what he'll be getting with his twenty dollar gift card. Now it's to any any place that he chooses. Hopefully he chooses something easy so I can just email him. Amazon's always a safe bet, but I just want to let you guys know um, I do these to this is a thank you. This comes out of my pocket. This show generates no revenue for me. Um, I'm going to say yet because I got some big plans in the future and hopefully someone out there definitely feels like they want to invest in the show and the brand um, and sponsor the show. I really appreciate it. I think that'd be cool. But as of right now, up until the Patreon gets up and running, up until, you know, uh, you know, things kind of get up and running, I make no revenue off of this show. So this is out of my own pocket just to show you guys that I really do care. I do appreciate you all listening. Um, so Anthony congratulations and there will be another gift card giveaway so i'm going to have to increase the milestones only because we're hitting them so fast kind of a bit of a humble brag there i guess but um i, I don't want to go broke but at the same time i want to show my appreciation so let's just shoot for a thousand um a thousand downloads will be the next idol the next idol gift card giveaway and i'll go into detail about that once we surpass the 1000 download mark so appreciate to everyone who listened so far i really do I love it. Now, diving right into the idle thoughts segment. Now, we have uh, idle first, a few idle firsts, actually. So we have three guests this time around. So that's one first. We have a repeat guest for the first time. That's another first. And finally, I'm going to play. Um, of course, I'm going to edit it, take out some of the kinks, but I'm going to play the full conversation of the interview. I think it's really important. The interviews were so good uh, that I didn't want to take any parts out of it. So as you guys know, um, when I do my idle thoughts, uh, segments, I kind of chop them up a bit. Right. And, uh, just to get the core, the person's point across and to kind of keep the episode short. But I said, Hey, why not? This topic is very important. It's very personal. And I'm sure a lot of you have gone through some things and in some cases may not have even realized it. So I wanted to play the full interviews because I think all three guests have something very powerful to say. So the first guest up is a friend of mine, Kyle. He's a buddy of mine. Kyle's pretty cool. He even has his own show, his own podcast. He'll give some information about that towards the end of the uh, his interview. But he talks about his own experiences with mental health, his perspective on mental health, and why he feels like men in particular need to dive into it uh, more passionately. So without further ado, here's Kyle, and here are some of his thoughts. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this segment of Idle Thoughts. On today's show, we have a really good friend of mine, former co-worker, Kyle. Kyle, how are you? I'm doing well, Tim. How about yourself, man? 
I'm great, man. I'm so excited to not only have the interview, but just to talk to you, man. It's uh, I miss your voice. I miss your face. <laughs> well, I miss you too, man. Hey, you were the inspiration for me to uh, for me to push the bar a little bit and push a little bit harder when we were coworkers. So uh, I figured, uh, you know, I I was in the podcast game for a little while, and then I saw you started one. I wanted to support my buddy, and then uh, these topics were a little close to me, so I I, I thought I would hop on and and uh, and show you that support firsthand. Uh, thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. And um, speaking of support, um, as men. Uh, sometimes we feel like we can shoulder the load on our own. Uh, we feel like we are supermen, uh, supermen or superman, or, you know, some sort of superhero, and we can do it all on our own. And uh, sometimes we feel like we don't need the help. We we can help other people, but we don't need the help. Um, so I wanted to ask you just to start right off the bat: uh, Is going to therapy or counseling frown, frowned upon uh, within the male community? You think men look down on that? I think generally, publicly, uh, they still do today, and it's it's unfortunate because I think one of the hot topics in the world, not just our country, for a few years now. So I won't I won't say that it's been the last year plus. It's beyond that. It's, it has been mental health issues, and it's um, it, it's for for both men and women. It's been a uphill battle for men to be willing to accept a lesser a quote unquote lesser role in the family. Because that's what we were taught. If you think back, uh, and and cr- you can correct me if if I'm wrong here, but <clears throat> our parents were really part of the first generation where like the women weren't just staying at home, but the men were still looked at as the main money makers, the the people who brought most of the money home. They were working more than the women were. That was the first really opportunity our parents' generation where. Women even had a say in the household besides cooking, cleaning, and taking care of the kids. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm speaking in generalities here, but our own parents had to had to uh, had to bear that load, uh, unless, of course, you know, if you're I'm talking about a, a traditional home where the two parents are still together, both alive, and the kids are there, and we're all in one home. In that sense, obviously, there are there are outliers where women, a man leaves, woman man dies, woman steps up and does all the things that was, as quote-unquote, expected from a man, and they prove that they can do it, and that's why that that's an ancient uh, theory anyway, is that the men need to be there to, to take care of the, the family financially while the women take care of them emotionally. I think that it's it's been ingrained in us for for a long time through old movies, through stories, through our parents and their experiences with their parents that the men do all the work to take care of the family physically while the women do do all the stuff emotionally and sensitivity wise and it's 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 a a very ancient practice a very ancient idea that men don't don't hold any emotional uh that anything emotionally back from the public that they don't that they don't need any help when it comes to that regard so i i think still today unfortunately it is yes frowned upon in the male community and Stephen, i think you bring up a a lot of good points, especially considering you know you only know what you know, right? And um, if you're if you if you're taught certain things by through different means, whether it be parents, uh, you know, uh, media, uh, peers, even even in school, uh, when you're taught that like, hey, men don't do this, men aren't supposed to do this, you kind of get that ingrained, and that becomes like the, that that becomes the question, like, hey, is this learned or is this taught? You know, um, so I. I just wanted to bring that to your attention. You know, like, are men taught that showing emotion is weak, or is it learned? Um, is it something that they learn that they have to do growing up? Well, I think you can't have one without the other. I think that we are learning it because that's the way it's always been taught. Um, and it's it's become – I've watched – again, to, to reference my family, I've watched my dad transform – into a whole different person uh, as he realized as more of these sensitivities and as these more of these culture changes have been brought to the public and been accepted generally as uh, as as okay whether it be mental illness whether it be sexual preference whether it be gender uh, identity issues my dad who used to be very traditional in the 70s and 80s thinking it's this way or that way has I've watched him open up I've watched him be like no dude just people are people like that's you accept them for who they are, and if they have issues, you help them out. And one thing that my dad has had to do, and he's taken it upon himself, and I've watched him do it, and it's inspired me to 
to be more proactive with my mental health and be willing to talk about it openly and be willing to talk about the fact that, like, I'm, right now I just admitted a few weeks ago that I need to go talk to somebody and I'm looking for counseling or, or psychiatrist or psychologist. And it's, it, it's, it's an issue that my dad pointed out to me that I had. And it's, it's, you are taught it, but you have to be willing to learn to change your mind. I was taught as a young kid that men are men, they're brawn. It's, the brain doesn't matter. It's all brawn. It's how can you protect the family? It's how can you go do this? It's how can you be the strongest and the best? And, and now I view it like, my my dad is now showing me, and I have to be willing to learn from him that now that my my sister passed away a few years ago, and he shouldered all the phone calls to call people to let them know, and he cried on each one. I watched my my dad focus up, and then he couldn't get the words out, and he cried, and that was okay. No one was mad at him. We all understood. And me watching him do that let me learn that it's okay to break down. It's okay to to let the emotion get the best of you at times when it's especially when when something tragic in your life has happened it's it's not frowned upon to just you know it, it's i mean his he lost someone in his family it's not just ah well someone else will take care of it and then you keep doing your thing it's take a minute process it let it work through your body the way that you know how to work it sit there and let your brain think and how to process this the proper way before before you just keep suppressing things and then you burst it's i mean it's it's an old in old uh, tradition, not even a tradition, I'm misspeaking, but in old wives' tale that, that the Irish all, uh, all all will will either die young or depressed uh, because they are all emotional, they wear their emotions on their sleeves, and then they drink to push it right back in. <laughs> so they drink heavily to push all that emotion right back into their body. And then it all builds up, and then it explodes, and then you die. That's exa- that's basically what – I mean, that's why people say that – you know, that, that I mean, it's it's unfortunate, but people used to say that old Irishmen would just drink and then and then hit their kids or hit their wife or whatever, which, I mean, obviously is from way back when. But you have those situations because these guys get emotional, don't know how to express it because they're going to be looked at as lesser than the other men, and then they drink to hide that fact, and then they get angry because they're drinking, and then they hit people. I mean, that's – it's basically what the any any man who still does something like that that's basically what he doesn't know how to sh- how to show his emotions, so he drinks to crush them, and then the drink and the emotion mixed together makes him ca- causes outbursts. It's he's not learning to change what he was taught, and we're we're in a weird position our generation because we fall between what used to be and we're 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 alive during the change. We're not we don't have the ability to look in the history book. And look at, hey, this is when that happened because we're living it right now. And it's on us as men, as young men, uh, specifically you and I, to be able to learn from both past experiences and what's currently happening in our world, in our country, and understand that, uh, to to be cliche, not being okay, that's okay. Yeah, I I totally agree with you um, in the sense of that, like, it's our responsibility uh, as the current. Uh, uh, fatherhood, so to speak. Like, we're the ones that we're raising kids uh, uh, right now. It's our time to shine, so to speak. And just like you learned from your father that it's okay to show emotion, uh, we need to be uh, do the same thing uh, uh, for our for our children and for our kids. And I, and I think that's dope, man, that you had somebody like that to witness and see. And I, I realize that it sounds like you don't take that for granted, but I feel like a lot of people do. I feel like a lot of people will have these uh, resources and these tools around them, whether that be a person or whether it be, you know, a book or whether it be a website. Um, and they just kind of look at it and go, uh, it's always there. I'll go to it when it's, when it gets that bad instead of constantly learning from it and constantly seeing it. So I think it's dope that you had somebody to uh, show you that it's okay uh, to be emotional and it's okay uh, to express those emotions. And here are some ways you can do that um, that, that, that aren't violent. Um, so exactly. I, I think that's, uh, <laughs> you know, I think, I think that's pretty dope to have that archetype. And, and to your point, I think a lot of people who, um, do lash out and there are domestic violence situations and they find themselves in, uh, domestic violence situations. I think they, you're exactly right. They didn't have that. That's not hereditary, right? Like if, if your father's an alcoholic and, you know, he beat your mother, you're not destined to do that. That's not in your blood, you know? Um, but however, if that's your only source of learning, 
and you learn like, hey, that's okay, that's normal for me to do that if I get upset, then yes, you're going to do it. You know, you're more, or rather, should I say, it's more likely uh, for you to do it, um, you know, versus having uh, a positive role model. And it's important that it be a man. It's very important, very important that it be a man um, to have. And it doesn't have to be a father. Some people are in situations where their father isn't around anymore. Um, it can be an uncle. It can be a mentor. It can be, hell, it can even be a manager. If you and your manager are that close, you know, um, just, just to show you, like, hey, it's okay to deal with this, and this is how to deal with it. You know, it's really, really important that we, we have that outlet. So uh, thanks for sharing it. I think that's really, really important. Now, earlier, way, way in the beginning of the conversation, um, uh, you mentioned uh, your podcast. So I, I definitely want to give shine a little light on that. Um, you know, one hand wash the other, both wash the face. And uh, I wanted you to talk about that a little bit if you have the time. Yeah, can I give one uh, one final point on what we were just talking about, then I'll give that? Yeah, sure. Uh, just because you brought it up, I wanted to build on that. You said, you know, it's very important for men to – not that they can't learn anything from women, obviously, because women are just as strong as we are, if not stronger in most cases. Um, but it's it's weird how you associate with with who you're who you're similar to, and we – we do need to have male influences in our in our lives as men. We need that. But I think on, on the on the flip side, men out there, when you have a daughter instead of a son, do not be disappointed mm. because women go through so many struggles and so many of their struggles start with men. So many mm. of their worries in life are from men. When I go out and I want to have a good time, I throw whatever I want on and I go out and I have a good time. Women spend an hour getting ready, and it's not because they need to look cute for you. It's what can I look good in, feel good about myself in, but also feel safe, protected, and not feel like someone's going to hunt me down at the end of the night. And the reason that they feel that way is because of men. Not every man, but because of men. And it's our job when they are little girls to show them what it is like to be treated respectfully and and in a loving way by men, by not only treating them that way, but showing them by example, by loving the women in their life the exact same way. It's on us as men to show women how they deserve to be treated, and they should hold themselves to that standard and not be in situations where they are not being treated that way. I want to make that clear. Men, it's our job to influence women when it comes to how they're going to be treated by men in the future. It's on us as men, as fathers, as brothers, as whatever the situation may be. Hey, Boogie, with the knowledge, dropping yeah, knowledge, I, dropping gems. <laughs> it, it's important, man. It needs to be said. No, I agree, man, and that's very powerful. Um, and this is a topic that we could talk about all day. Um, a lot of people tend to look at someone who um, looks like them, acts like them, behaves like them for guidance, and that's okay. And I, I think in certain areas, it should be that way. I think men should go to men uh, for advice and women should go to women for advice. But uh, you're absolutely right. A lot of our fears in life come from what we don't understand. And there are going to be a ton of women out there who fear men um, because a, a man uh, growing up wasn't there to tell them, like, hey, this is what it, this means when we do this or this is why you shouldn't go out like that. Uh, it's very important. We're like sponges when we're kids. That's why we learn the most when we're kids. That's why it's important for us to, if we're going to pick up another language, to learn it as a kid. We're sponges. Our brains are more designed to learn uh, more efficiently when we're younger. It's harder to learn things once you become an adult. Uh, and yep. uh, it's really, really important uh, to to uh, instill those values. Think about some of the values we have today, some of the things we do, even simple things like drinking a glass of water before bed. When did we learn to do that? When was it instilled uh, in us? Um, they say it takes 21 days for you to do something, for you to develop a habit. I think that only applies to adults. I think kids pick it up much quicker, much faster, uh, especially if an authoritative figure in their life tells them, hey, you need to go to bed at 8 o'clock. They're going to look at that as, hey, I'm following instruction from my father, from my mother, so I'm going to go to bed at 8. Versus as an adult, you have no one to answer to as far as your bedtime goes, So unless you're in the military. But, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're like, hey, I'll get around to going to bed at 8. I'll try to go to bed at 9 and work my way back towards 8. You know, 
Um, so, yeah, so man. even as kids, it's it's more important uh, for us to uh, get those values instilled. So, yeah, great feedback there, great bring up. I, I totally agree. Um, now, now you just drop a lot of gems. Do you drop gems like that on your show? Uh, yeah. So, it, it, so let me start. The, the, is, the podcast is called Industry Four O. Uh, we talk about the weekly topics, weekly news in tech. But the nice thing is, is that we get to have those moments. So, tech is so in intertwined in the world nowadays where it affects everything. Everything technology affects everything else, whether it be uh, different companies affecting corporations, whether it's uh, the president's tweets, whether it's uh, this, that, the other, anything that has to do with technology, we will cover it. And we take the time on important topics to kind of delve deeper and see how it affects us, not day to day, but socioeconomically, whether uh, what we do moving forward as a community, how it could potentially affect us. We theorize a lot. And that, and a lot of times we have fun doing it. So it's not all serious the whole time. I know I just threw a lot out there like it's the craziest thing in the world. But if you go check out, we have a Facebook page. If you check out facebook.com slash industry 4 all spelled out. So industry, then F-O-U-R-O-H. Or you can find us on iTunes if you search I-4-0 or Industry 4-0, uh, we will appear. It's a little white symbol with a black 4 and then green and black gears is the symbol that you're looking for. And we're also available on the Google Play Store. We're hosted on Podbean. So wherever you can find your – we have an RSS feed. So wherever you normally get your podcast, if you search Industry 4-0, it's a tech podcast. We talk about current day tech and how it might affect our lives moving forward. And we like to have fun while we do it. That's what it's all about, guys. You've heard it. Um, you definitely want to check that out. Uh, a lot of you, uh, Kyle and I were actually talking offline. Uh, let give you guys a little VIP treatment here. Uh, we were talking offline about how sometimes you think you know it all, and sometimes you think you're a gamer, you think you're a techie, um, and then you hear you come across a community uh, or a question that makes you realize that you're not. That knowledge is what you think you are. So uh, you never want to stop learning. You never want to stop growing, and uh, uh, I4O can be another outlet for that. So thank you for sharing that, Kyle. Um, one last thing, man. I really appreciate the support. I really appreciate you calling in, giving this feedback. It's really important topics that we have that we need to talk about uh, as men um, and just as society in general. Um, but more importantly, man, I just appreciate hearing from you. I, th- I think it was nice hearing from you. I think it was nice talking to you. Um, if you had to choose one topic to hear about on the show, maybe if, maybe if it was a topic we spoke about in the past and you just want to expand on it, um, or maybe a brand new topic that we haven't that we haven't spoke uh, touched on yet, uh, what, what would that topic be? Well, I, I think the topic that I that has been most uh, most prevalent in my mind recently that I've wanted to spark conversation amongst my friends with is how can we influence the generation after us. I've been watching a lot of TV and watching a lot of shows, and uh, one thing that stuck out to me was the show 13 Reasons Why. And it's, you know, it glorifies a lot of things, and it's, it's it may be a little bit over the top, but things like this happen every day to people. And I think it gets back to what I kind of talked about during the questions was it's, we're part of the generation where we need to be part of the change, where treating Treating girls however you want to treat them just because they're different than you, because you know that you're stronger than them, isn't okay. We've known that for a long time. But yet still, things that happen to women still affect their life. They, these kinds of things still happen every day where a woman gets abused and then she emotionally for months doesn't say anything because people aren't there to support her when she tries to reach out. And then the worst thing happens and sex, something sexual happens to her, and then we, we get down a whole other path where we're worried about – their livelihood versus emotional stability. And it's obviously one led to the other. And I think that teaching young boys now is an important way to stop that culture, stop this college frat culture, stop this quote-unquote rape culture, if you want to call it that. How do we put an end to it now instead of waiting to hear about it in the news and then going to protest the, the court cases? How do we stop it before it happens? And I think one of the way is, ways is, ta- is getting an understanding from both men and women and going and talking to youth about how it's not okay. But the question is how as you and I who have our own lives to live and have, have the things that we're doing, whether it comes to work or personal lives, how do we influence people or others or the generation ourselves to make sure that this is a thing of the past and that 
you know, cases that, that resemble this TV show don't happen, so we don't need that TV show to tell us anymore. We don't need that TV show to show us that these things are happening anymore because we know that it's not happening at least nearly as much as it was because we are teaching these young men the right way to treat people. And that, that's, I think it's, the question is how do we do it as individual men living in Philadelphia who only have so many resources at our, at our, at our feet? Great bring up, Kyle. Um, let's all be the change that we want to see. So mm-hmm. that's dope, man. Lead by example. Hey, absolutely, man. Hey, Kyle, thank you so much for uh, calling in, sharing some of your thoughts, sharing some of your time. I really appreciate it. I can't wait to talk to you soon and hopefully maybe even have you on the show, maybe some of the guys from the show uh, on again in the future. I think that would be dope. I agree, man. Thanks for having me, man. Great to catch up with you. Great stuff there from Kyle. My favorite takeaway and my favorite part about Kyle's interview is how he talked about how important of a role his father was in his life. I think as men, we become, like you heard in the interview, I feel like we become these these robots, right? We're like these invincible people and we just can take a beating. You know, other people can lean on us for their problems and their situations. But when it comes to us uh, confiding in other people, we feel like we're invincible and we don't need to do that. So I, th- I thought it was really cool that his father, he kind of watched the metamorphosis of his father grow into this emotional being. And he learned consciously and subconsciously that it's okay for men to express these thoughts. We're not robots. And it's really important for us to express these emotions as well. I thought that was pretty dope. Thank you so much, Kyle, for that. Really appreciate it. And feel free to check out Kyle's show. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, next up, we have Ryan. Now, Ryan is a repeat guest. You guys heard from Ryan before. Uh, pretty pretty close friend of mine and uh, in part the reason uh, for the show. And Ryan is back a second time around to talk about mental health. And he talks about uh, learning versus being taught uh, certain qualities and traits uh, that men go through when it comes to mental health and leaning on other people. So here's Ryan and check out what he has to say. Hello everyone. The next interviewee that we have here on the Idle Thought segment is actually a return guest, first time in Idle history, the long storied and uh, uh, ancient Idle uh, show uh, history. Uh, We have a repeat interviewee. So I would like to welcome back Ryan, Ryan, thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you so much for coming back. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good, good. Uh, thanks for having me back on the show. Always a pleasure, man. Not a problem at all, man. Thanks for, thanks for some of your time. So uh, I was really happy to get you back on. Um, I know this is a topic that you wanted to talk about, um, and we spoke offline about how it's something that definitely needs to get brought up and definitely uh, need more men talking about this topic. So um, I really appreciate you sharing some of your time and, and some of your thoughts regarding the topic. And just to dive right into it, man, um, you know, therapy is, generally speaking, frowned upon um, for men to do. Uh, men, we, we try to say that we're this invincible person, you know, um, and, and we're walking around with this uh, big old sheet of armor, um, and uh, we don't need help. We don't need therapy. We don't need to talk about our problems. We'll just deal with it. Now, if you want to come to me with your problems, I'll listen, but I'm not going to go to anybody about my problems because I'm the man. I'm I'm, I'm invincible. Uh, do you personally feel like it's going to therapy or counseling frowned upon uh, within the male community and just in general? Uh, yeah, actually, I, I do. I, I think I think um, therapy is frowned upon in, in, in a lot of communities, actually. Um, from what I see, unless you're uh, unless you're a middle aged to older white woman uh, or or uh, a traumatized child, you shouldn't have therapy. You know, that's kind of what the consensus is. That's kind of what, you know, how the public perceives it or perceives maybe. Um, I think there's been a lot of, uh, a lot of celebrities have um, been kind of shining in the light and saying like, hey, listen, therapy's kind of regular. So I think it's, I think it's starting to become a little bit more regular in, in, uh, you know, just society as a whole. Um, you know, not you know, not saying you know, men can go and women can go, and there's not really anybody uh, that's really frowning upon it anymore. But I will say, um, even as even as as recent as maybe two, three years ago, um, yeah, yeah, guys were seen as you got to be the strong one, you got to be the rock. You know, you can't you can't show weakness because 
other people are relying on you to be strong. And so if you're if you're not strong for you, how can you be strong for anyone else? And I think that's why a lot of times, you know, guys don't want to go to therapy or or kind of want to tough it out and bottle it all in. It's just because if I let you in, you know, if I appear vulnerable to you in that sense, then now I don't seem as tough. And now you won't come to me for comfort and for protection because you've seen me in a weak state. In a weak state. Now there you go, man. You know, you, you kind of—it's not. I don't want to say a public persona, but essentially that's what it is. You're the mm-hmm. man, you're the rock, and you're this rock, and you're not supposed supposed to have any chips in it whatsoever. Um, and you're supposed to be this rock and this foundation, and you're support, supposed to support the people around you. So who are you to feel weak? Who are you? to feel, uh, feel uh, emotional. But then, then that just goes to show it, it, it perpetuates the misconception that emotions are weak, you know, and that uh, uh, emotions uh, are things that uh, only uh, some a strong man wouldn't have and a strong man shouldn't have. Uh, which bears the question, man, are men taught that showing emotion is weak or is it learned? You know, is it something that we're taught to do, like, hey, you should not be this way? Or do you think it's something that we learn to do just based off of worldly observations, especially growing up? Uh, a little bit of both. Um, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, uh, women, I think you said this before on a past show, men and women have their roles. Um, you know, the, your role is specific to who you are and who your relationship is with. But, you know, at the end of the day, you have roles, uh, uh, you have roles that you portray in an act. Um, so at the end of the day, you, a a lot of guys are, a lot of guys start off, or I don't want to start off, but a lot of guys, a lot of, in today's society, like, just like we talked about before when, um, back in the day when men kind of went to work and like you said, they were the rock, they were the provider. And then the woman, they just kind of stayed at home and did their own thing and and, and kept the household, uh, or, or kept the household down. I think a lot of those same ideas and and beliefs even though the times have changed a lot of those same ideas and beliefs are like uh, subconsciously practiced so even though we're we're in a progressive society now where uh, men and women both have jobs it's kind of like still those habits of the man opening the door for the woman as an example or the man uh uh uh, you know being the quote-unquote provider because in some in some relationships the guy is still that provider and that's the way that they like it so i think in today's society, there are still examples of the guy having these certain roles where, you know, it, you kind of see it and, okay, you feel like you have to do this way, you have to be this way. Um, and then at the same time, there are guys, or I don't want to say guys, but then there are parents who kind of drill it in to their child that this is how you are supposed to be. So it's a little bit of both. Um, you know, it, it's a little bit of both. I, unfortunately, I can't give you a straight answer on where it's specifically coming from um, but, because I just think it comes from all avenues, at least from these two perspectives. Does that make sense? No, it does. Um, and we sometimes uh, overlook what is a teacher, and we we automatically blame the teacher on the parents. We blame the teacher on like who who the actual teacher is in school, and we say the teacher is like like media, right? Uh, like TV or you know whatever. But there are other things that teach you too. Like your peers can be a teacher. The environment can be a teacher. Um, right. When you're walking around and, and yeah, you do see uh, a, a, a man hold the door open for a woman, and you notice that, and you keep seeing that. Even on a subconscious level, you do it. So even right. if you don't learn it in school, even if you don't learn it on TV, and even if your parents don't show you that, you can still pick it up. So um, I think, yes, your, your parents can teach you um, an environment uh, uh, you learn from. So it almost becomes nature versus nurture type of deal. Um, and, and, and that's a, that's a good bring up. So, uh, can I give Ryan, a you... example real quick, um, about that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. So like, so if you think about it, um, I remember back when I was in like elementary school, I was in, like the fifth grade. Uh, if there's ever a situation where like the teacher says, Hey, I need like you to take these boxes of books for whatever. I need you to take it to Miss Thompson's class down the hall. Like they would never pick a girl to do that. You know what I mean? It would always be, okay, Ryan or Richard or, or any any of the boys in the class are the ones that do the listing. You know what I mean? And I'm sure that's a subconscious thing where it's like you're not going to pick a girl to do that because it's a guy's job. Now, she's probably not thinking that consciously, but in a subconscious state, she's automatically picking a guy. 
which and then is going to rub off on that child because he's going to notice, just like I noticed, only boys are being picked to pick up the box and take it to Miss Thompson's class. If, you know what I mean? Like, that's kind of what I'm trying to get across. No, I think that's a good point. And just to, just to touch on the, the whole talk versus learn thing, right? Now you're learning as a boy, I need to do this. This is the thing, right? Like, this is something, a habit that I need to do. Or now maybe next time she doesn't have to pick me, I'll volunteer. Oh, no, I'll take the boxes down, right? Because I'm the boy. That's what I'm supposed to do, right? But then think right. about this. Think about what it shows the, the young women in that class now. Because now the mm. young women are looking at it like, oh, the men do does that. The the, the men, they do that. They The, the men, they, it's their job to, to do that. I don't have to do that. Or I know that she's only picking men. Is she saying that, like, women aren't supposed to do that? Is she saying that women aren't strong enough, they can't do it? Whatever. You know, um, so so that that's that's a good uh, bring up. I like that. Um, and and uh, talk about uh, learn versus taught. So, um, so so that's a, that's a good example of that. Um, speaking of uh, good examples, Ryan, you're one of the best, if not the best, examples of uh, listeners of the show. Um, you've been around since day one. Um, it's day zero, really. Um, and uh, you've been uh, supporting the show in uh, a few different ways. So as always, man, I'm going to ask you the same questions I even ask you offline. Um, what would you like to hear in the future, or what would you like to see differently on the show? Particularly nothing different on the show. Uh, I think the show is going pretty – I think the format you have is pretty good. Um, I definitely enjoy the idle thoughts being a part of the show and then listening to some of your other viewers' perspectives. Um, the one thing I'd like to hear you talk about on the show – uh, outside of the last thing that I mentioned before, I really don't have anything else that I could think of. Um, the last thing I mentioned before was, I guess, just, you know, the consistent police brutality that seems to, you know, take place. Uh, you and I have had multiple conversations about that. Um, you know, so I think just diving into that a little bit would be, I think, would be an interesting topic. Um, but other than that, man, I, I'm, other than that, I can't think of anything that I particularly would want to would wanna hear that you haven't really touched on, you know. Well, one thing that I wanted to bring up before we go, um, in the past offline, we spoke about how you have personally come across some people who listen to the Idle Talk segment and listen to the show in general, and they have some different points. They have a different perspective. And some of their feedback was, hey, there needs to be more people on the show who have different viewpoints and who disagree with Tim um, instead of just finding a bunch of people who agree with Tim. So what would you say to the people who are listening to the show who do disagree uh, but they haven't reached out yet? Would you give them any advice or, or any feedback on how they can get in touch with me? Yeah, uh, speaking as speaking from the viewpoint of someone who consistently disagrees with you, uh, I'm, actually, I'm actually a little disappointed that I haven't been on the show and had the, had the chance to go back and forth with you on a topic that we, that we disagree on, uh, simply because – I think you have an ability that is extremely underrated when you're actually listening to the other person's point and you respond to that point. And so a lot of people, uh, when I get into uh, debates or arguments with them, they'll just list their points. You know what I mean? They'll just give reasons on why. They'll say Deer Park is better than Aquafina for X, Y, and Z. But when I say, well, wait, there was an issue with with Deer Park's uh, filtering system last year, they don't address that. They just list another reason why they think their park is better. You know what I mean? So I think I think you do a great job of of, of engaging in that other person's uh, concern and belief and why they feel that way. And I think that's the best way to conduct conversation. So I think I mean the only thing I can say, man, is, is reach out to the show. It, it'll be it will definitely be a conversation uh, worth having and something that you'll take some information from uh, and just get some some good feedback from. I. I uh, Definitely encourage a healthy conversation with Tim. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Ryan. And, guys, you've heard it first. You know, I do not bite. You know, please come on to the show. If you disagree, um, it'll be great to have your voice heard. Um, I'm sure there will be a lot of people who think the same way you do, and there's nothing wrong with a healthy debate. And um, who knows, Ryan, maybe maybe uh, we'll, we'll have a little segment where you and I go back and forth about something in the future. Uh, I think think that would be dope and uh, give, give definitely give something for the people to listen to. I think that would be cool. Mm, absolutely, man. Absolutely. 
Well, Ryan, I thank you so much for some of your time. I really appreciate you uh, taking some time out of your day to share some of your thoughts. And I always appreciate you just in general, the feedback you give to the show. So uh, with that being said, thank you so much again, and I look forward to talking to you in the future. All right, man, no problem. Again, thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much, Ryan. I always admire your passion and your uh, ability to be so f uh, frank and blunt. I really appreciate that. Now, um, you'll hear throughout these interviews, there are a lot of things that are a bit redundant, right? And you're probably thinking to yourself, Tim, why did you do that? Tim, why did you have three people on who are basically saying the same thing? I wanted to drive home the point that I have three different individual, uh, three different people who uh, uh, haven't interacted with each other often at all. In some cases, I uh, haven't even met the other person and how their story is still pretty similar. So I did that for I did that for the general audience to let you guys know that, like, hey, this thing is real. Mental health is real. And I did it specifically for my male listeners to let you know that we are not robots. We are not androids. We are not invincible. We go through stuff, guys. We do. And in some cases, we don't even realize it. So it's very important for us to uh, dive into whatever outlet we have and um, take advantage of that. So I, I wanted you to understand that this is something that's real. This is something that happens and, and you're not invincible. So you should take advantage of any therapeutic opportunity that you have. Last up, we have my buddy Maurice. Now, Reese is a really good friend of mine, um, also a former co-worker, and he shares a very personal story about his situation with mental health when it comes to his father um, and the loss of his father. And he was a very brave person to even not only bring it up in the interview, but to okay it being aired in the first place. So I thought that was pretty cool and very powerful uh, and also in small part helped me uh, tell you guys my personal uh, uh, story as well. So without further ado, here's Maurice and his passionate story. All right, everyone. Um, our third and final interviewee for the Idle Dots segment is a really good friend of mine, also former coworker. I know you guys are starting to see a theme here, but we make a lot of friends with the people we work with if we work with them for for some time. A good friend of mine, I've known him for quite some time, former coworker, Maurice. Maurice, how are you, sir? I'm great, sir. How are you? I'm great, man. Um, I, I tell all of my interviewees who are like old friends of mine that uh, um, although it is for the show, it's kind of like a cheap way for me to catch up with you guys. So uh, I'm really, I'm really happy to hear your voice. I'm happy to hear from you. Um, it's been too long, and I'm really excited to have you on the show. I know you're passionate about the topics that we want to talk about today. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's always great to to catch up with you, man. Absolutely, absolutely. So, well, without further ado, just diving right into it, man. Um, and, and you were the uh, uh, first person to hit me up uh, regarding the uh, topics of the show. So I know it's something that uh, you you have uh, some uh, personal ties to, and it's something you're really passionate about. Uh, so mm -hmm. I really wanted to talk to you about the whole therapy thing and and the men's perspective on that, especially within the black community, because it's all the mm -hmm. times frowned upon. You know, like hey. You're a man. You don't need that. So uh, just coming right out, starting at the top, uh, do you think therapy or counseling is frowned upon within the male community, specifically the black community? I believe all forms of therapy that are not anger management are frowned upon within the black community. Um, I believe that that black people in general have a stigma over them where People believe that they are are very angry individuals. Um, so, if as an African American male, if you say, "Oh, I have anger management today," you can get off with that, like I have anger management. But if you're like, "Oh, my, I don't know, I just broke up with my wife, and I'm going to therapy for that," or "I just broke up with my girlfriend," or you know, so and so just passed away. And I, you know, literally need to talk to someone about these issues that I'm having. I believe it is frowned upon because as black men, we have that phrase, man up, man up. I want to repeat that a lot throughout the inter uh, interview, uh, that man up thing that we always say to people. Um, so, yes, everything outside of the anger management aspect, I believe, is very much frowned upon within the African-American community. That's interesting. I actually never heard that take uh, before, and I'm going to sit here and say I agree. Uh, 
you're right. If if someone breaks up uh, with their 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 husband or their wife, or uh, if someone wants to learn how to be a more positive, happy uh, individual, uh, you know, and you say, "Hey, I have therapy for this," uh, you get clowned a bit. You know, they say, "Oh, oh mm-hmm. why are you going to go do that? Why are you doing this?" You know. Um, but if it's, uh, hey, I, I got anger management. You know, um, it's acceptable. It's it's this thing. Mm-hmm. I, I will to add on to that. I will also. Say like maybe anything involving religion. Like if you have therapy in regards to religion, mm-hmm. if you say like, "Hey, I'm going to church to talk to my pastor," or or I'm going mm-hmm. to the, the the temple to talk to the priest, or you know whatever the religion is, uh, I think that's accepted because no one to 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 uh, uh, degrade or denounce religion is such a taboo thing to do that right. it's like you know, hey, I, I'm not going to touch that. Or they agree. They say, oh, you know, oh, no, that's the right thing you do. You need to be deeper in your spirituality. You need to be deeper mm-hmm. with your God. You need to be deeper with your peers, your congregation, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, yeah I would say absolutely. You know, anger management and, and, and religion are, like, the only two things that get, like, a pass. But, yeah, you, you right. kind of clown on a bit uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to therapy and any, any other way. Um, and then it bears the question, just to throw this one at you, uh, it bears the question as men, as young boys growing up, is it something that we're taught, or is it something that we learn just based off observations? Is do do our uh, peer group uh, peer groups do our parents uh, do they teach us like hey you as a man you should not do this, or do you think it's something that we learn growing up through our observations? We learn that hey showing emotion is weak. I believe it's a combination effect. Um, my father was a very emotional individual. Um, so growing up, I thought it was okay to be emotional. Um, I want to say around seventh or eighth grade, I started realizing, or I wouldn't say started realizing, but society started showing me that it's not okay to show emotion. Um, it's something I don't share too often with people. I'm actually a lot more emotional than people realize that I am. But I think that society kind of trained me to be this stoic, flatline individual um, in either direction. So I don't like to show when I'm incredibly excited about things. I also don't like to show when things really bother me. Like, I, I'm really flatlined and I'm, I'm going either way. Um, but it's the nature versus nurture question. So on certain things, you can pick up from family, older siblings, older family members, um, okay, how to show emotion how to, to get it out, but I believe society kind of scares men on the side of caution when it comes to showing your emotional side because, again, that brings man up. Um, if, you're, if your son falls down and, and he starts crying, then <clears throat> that's fine. We say man up, you know, he'll be okay. Rub some dirt on it. Uh, you know, whatever you tell a little boy to do. On the other hand, if you have a, a daughter – she falls down, you run over there, you pick her up, you brush her off. Um, so you're training a no in that aspect, like, it's not okay to be hurt. It's not okay to stay down. You got to get back up and go with it. Don't cry, you know. Um, something I think growing up, kids begin to see that, and they begin to make it their own. So now growing up, I can't fall, I fall down. I got to pick myself back up. I can't go ask for help because when I was four, years old and I fell down, my mom, my dad, you know, my main providers told me, get up, you'll be okay, stop crying, you're a man, you know, man up, that's the the thing, man up, man up, man up, man up, I hate that phrase, (laughs) and I know I use it a lot, but man up, so when you tell someone man up, you're pretty much saying whatever it is that you're dealing with right now. I don't care if your mom died. I don't care if your father passed away, if your kids just passed away, um, if you just lost your job, if you're about to get evicted. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, when you say man up to someone, you're saying that's not important. It's not important to deal with those feelings right now. You're a man. Don't talk to nobody. Just keep it moving and go through and deal with it. And I don't think that that's a productive thing to tell someone but it happens so often. So you train people, no, I'm not going to show this emotion. No, I'm not going to go talk to no therapist. I have to man up and get through this because that's what being a man is. That's what being a black man is, right? Right. And I 
think you touch on a unique perspective there. Um, the phrase, you know, man up or, or here's another one, especially being from Philly, I'm sure you can relate. Uh, oh. growing up in the schoolyard, if you hurt yourself, you fell down or whatever, what would you hear from your peers? You would hear the phrase stop girling. Yeah. And it's the right. same concept, right? Because even in the word in and of itself, you say man up. In other words, men, we right. don't do this thing. Like whatever it is right. that you're doing right now, you're being feminine. Like as a man, you mm -hmm. don't do that. So man up. When right. you hear the term stop girling, it's the same thing. It's just a little bit different twist of saying, hey, what you're doing right now is a feminine thing. Girls do that. Mm -hmm. It's If a right. girl did that thing that you're doing right now, it's okay. But because you're not a girl – stop being like that and quote unquote man up so yes um i to i totally agree with you there man and it's definitely a phrase that i think we need to be more conscious of um i think in a light-hearted environment maybe with the fellas you're playing a, a, a game a basketball game and you know, right. you want to scream ball because the guy hits your hand or something. Like, ah, oh, man, right. stop curling. Like, okay, that's mm -hmm. a, that's a unique controlled environment. Right. Um, but and, you, and 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 then you got to take a look at the environment that you're you're in. You're in a, a rough house, you know, mm -hmm. type of environment. But if 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 you know, in the few, like if you're around in a public area, you know, if you're in a public uh, uh, situation, you need to be. We need to be more conscious of the phrases that we say, especially ones like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. I think that there are some places where, like, I think people will take things like, like in the black community, some things just shouldn't be taken lightly. In all honesty, if you've been in a long-term relationship with a girl, even if you didn't marry her, and you guys break up, that's a hurtful situation. As much as men try to make it seem like it's not, it hurts. If you spent time with this person, if you, you know, spent money on this person, if you invested yourself emotionally with this person, regardless of if there was any ceremony, it's someone that you love. And if you're splitting up with that person, it hurts. You need some time to deal with those emotions that are going on. But if I, you go talk to one of your male friends, friends, I'm not even just talking about a male associate, like someone that you consider a friend, that the close bond with, we say, look, I am hurting because me and so and so just broke up. The response is, oh man, man, uh, yeah, let's go out get some drinks, you know, and get you another girl right away. And that's not helping the situation <laughs> whatsoever by doing that. You, yes, you may be putting a, um, you may be ignoring it, you may be turning a blind eye to it, but those feelings. They remain and they fester because you don't deal with them. And what happens is they begin to, to carry over in the other aspects of life. Um, uh, it, it's like the sweeping it under the rug thing. You can sweep the dirt underneath the rug, but it's still there when you lift the rug up. Instead of just, you know, getting rid of the dirt and getting it out, then you just have, like, all this stuff that you're dealing with because men are taught not to... To, to, to address these things, to hurry up and move on, to stop growing, to, to man up and get over it. Don't go talk to the therapist. Um, don't go talk to, to, to a trusted individual. Don't go talk to, to anyone. Just kind of deal with it. And that's where these bad habits of drinking started. That's where drug addiction started. Because you're looking at something to kind of take away from that pain that you felt. Um, you know, for some people, it starts as, as young as five and six years old, you know, when they realize that their father figure is in there, or when you lose your mother as a young age, or, you know, Lord knows what happened when you were a kid, that you were never able to deal with those situations. So you start to feel that void with, with other things, drinking, smoking, pill popping, uh, uh, woman chasing, whatever. <laughs> and it's just a, it leads to a very unhealthy environment unhealthy lifestyle and healthy community as a whole i agree man and um i really appreciate the feedback so far just the perspective so mm -hmm. far um i think this is a topic this is dialogue that needs to happen and mm -hmm. um you know i need people and want people and hope for people to see that like hey you know um there are individuals out there who feel this way and more specifically, I need the men who listen to the show to hear, like, hey, mm -hmm. I had three men on so far 
uh, who are saying that, look, it's okay. So for everyone who, who are, who's listening right now, like if, if for, therapy is okay, counseling is okay, it's definitely something um, that should not be frowned upon. And, uh, you know, sometimes rocks get chipped chips in it too so if, if we can't be the rock all the time you know so um Barbara, I, I appreciate the support oh i'm sorry you had something you want to say good i can share something with the guys uh, real quick for the listeners um i'm talking I, i've been in therapy i've only been in a one-on-one session one time um in my life but i went through relationship therapy um with my last girlfriend that's with you. one two three at least three different therapists in relationship therapy. Um, and I had a one-on-one session once with one of the therapists. And I broke down crying in the therapy. And we, we were talking about, um, not to go into too much detail, but I lost my dad in 2010. And the therapist was just asking me to kind of replay the events that happened that night. Um, and it's something I don't like to talk about, like, Whenever someone asks me about my dad, I'll say, oh, yeah, he passed away in 2010. But I don't like to talk about, like, that night in in particular because I know that it's a, a rough spot for me. It's a hard thing to deal with. Um, and I was talking to her about the night, and I was the first one. My dad has seven kids. I was the first one to find out. So I had to break the news to all of my siblings and to hear all of your siblings break down one by one by one when you're calling them to say, hey, your father passed away. My dad wasn't sickly either. It was a sudden death. So that did something to me emotionally. And when I was talking to her about it, and, like, I just broke down crying. I was like, oh, my gosh. And I didn't, you know, go back. And I probably should have gone back. Um, And that's probably we can talk about why I didn't go back probably from now until next Sunday, Tim. Um, But it's helpful, though, to get it out, to realize these are the things that bother me. Something happened in my life. And it bothers me. And I never really talk to anyone about it. So when you sit down in front of the therapist, it's okay. It makes you feel better. I like the session feeling better, I can tell you that. You know, I just talked about it again on the air, and I'm not crying or anything like that. So I'm in a better place now than I was before I had that meeting. Because before, I couldn't talk about it without breaking down. So I would just avoid the subject as a whole. Wow, man. Thank you. So that's a very powerful story. And the, the biggest takeaway, uh, well, I see there's a, there's a lot to take away. I would say one of the biggest takeaways mm-hmm. is how you are, uh, you're championing how you felt afterwards. And, mm-hmm. uh, you were confronted with some emotions that you've locked away. Uh, mm-hmm. and you didn't, you didn't have to deal with because you, you, you convinced yourself, I don't have to deal with this ever again. And then when those emotions came back to the forefront during the, the therapy session, you, you had a, 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 realization self self realization like hey this is okay it's okay to do this and mm-hmm. you say you left feeling better so um i hope that personal story can touch a lot of people and they're like look it's okay mm-hmm. it's it, it's okay there's nothing wrong with it in fact i hope we get to the point where therapy isn't frowned upon not going to therapy is i hope we get to that that mm-hmm. point where uh we encourage more uh uh, uh, people to to find an outlet, a professional outlet, because we all have, mm-hmm. you know, family members that we go to. We all have friends that we go to. But as good as they are, and as much experience as they have, they aren't trained in certain schools of thought. Um, and it's a mm-hmm. part of the reason why you diff- you have different friends for different reasons, right? One friend might be a mm-hmm. drinker and a partier. Another friend might be really in the books. Another friend might be in a gamer. Uh, right. Might be a gamer, be really in the games. So, uh, yeah, you might be able to go to your grandmother or your aunt or your sister uh, or, or your uncle or your, your father or, or your brother or your best friend or your son, whoever it is, and talk to them about issues, but they won't be able to attack it from an angle that a trained professional therapist or psychologist or, in some cases, psychiatrist uh, will be able to. So thank you for sharing that. That was really, really powerful. Um, and I, I hope it touches the hearts of a lot of people. So um, I'm not too sure how long you've been listening to the show, but uh, be, hopefully based on this conversation, you get a general understanding and idea of how open-minded we like to be on the show. Are there any mm-hmm. topics that you would like to hear on the show going forward? Um, or maybe if you have heard a topic in the past, something that you want to hear expanded on on the show in the future? 
Um, no, I, I actually enjoy the diversity of topics where you can go, you know, to as much liberty as, you know, the most recent rap album or, um, I believe uh, you were talking about the one to uh, Tiffany Haydish, I believe it was. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Topic. So I love how you can go from, you know, Tiffany Haydish or something like that to something as deep into why, you know, men should, should go to therapy. I love that range of topics <laughs> right there. Um, some things that I would like to see. It's just, just in general, um, more topics about Black America, not just Black men, but just Black America in general. But I think we could do better um, as a society, as an African American society. Um, maybe debunking some of those stereotypes that exist about the Black um, community, um, being the uneducated ones, the um, heavy partier ones, you know, um, violent things along that nature. Um, and I, like I said, I love the, 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 the lighthearted ones, too. So just, do a, you know, I love to hear the topics about Drake and Luke and, and uh, <laughs> who else just had a new album? Nah, so I'm like, oh, cool, man, I live under a rock. Um, <laughs> nah, I just dropped a new album. <laughs> I think Jay-Z and Beyonce just had a new album. So I love to see, you know, that diversity of topics where it's like, okay, I can have fun this week. And then next week, I'm dead serious. <laughs> um, <laughs> next week, it's, it's great. And it's something that keeps, you know, people coming and keeps people in the tank. Like, I don't know what I'm going to get this week, but I can't wait. So. I appreciate that feedback. Thank you so mm-hmm. much. Um, and I, I take pride in being able to provide content uh, that people care care about. Um, and, uh, I mean, the show is called I'll Talk If You'll Listen for a Reason. And mm-hmm. I like to embody that culture in every aspect of the show, whether it be an interview it be me uh, doing the show, um, even with feedback and new segments. So um, I, I'm really excited to hear that. Thank you. Um, and uh, I'm really happy to have you on the show, Maurice. Thank you so much for sharing some of your time, some, some of your thoughts. And, and thank you for, most importantly, sharing that story because a lot of people, specifically men, are going to need to hear it. So um, I'm looking forward to the next time we can talk, and hopefully we can have you on the show again in the future. Thank you so much. Absolutely, son, man. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much, Reese. I really appreciate it. You helped me uh, so much over the past two weeks uh, by telling you by telling me your story, and I can't wait for the masses to hear it. So, hey, if you all want to share your opinion or your thoughts about this topic in general, there are several ways to hit me up. If you've been listening for a bit, this is going to sound like a broken record because you already know the ways. But for any of the new listeners, just to drive home the point, you can email me. I'll talk if you'll listen at hotmail.com. Uh, You can hit me up on YouTube. This episode will be posted to YouTube as well. So you can go right on YouTube, leave a comment on YouTube. I'll respond to the comments as soon as I can. Uh, If you have a Spreaker membership, you can follow me on Spreaker and leave a comment on the show or shoot me a message on Spreaker. And and again, that's like Spreaker, but with an R after the P there. Uh, You can hit me on Instagram. You can hit me on Facebook. You can hit me on Twitter. And finally, uh, if you know me personally, text me, call me. Uh, The weekends are a great time to do that for me um, and uh, keep an eye out for uh, additional content over the weekend as well. So now all of this information is going to be posted in the description of the show. So if you say, hey, you know what, I do want to reach out to Tim, but you forget, don't worry, it's in the description of the show. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. I really do. Thank you so much. Uh, Some big news coming in the future in regards to the show and just a small, tiny update um, I do Instagram live videos, uh, uh, usually about three, four times a week. Uh, so feel free to follow me on Instagram and to tune in, tune into those. I post those videos later on to Facebook and YouTube. Uh, but if you want to go ahead and check those out while they're live, I love interacting with you all. And I think it's pretty cool. Uh, and you kind of get some to get to hear some unfiltered thoughts. Usually when um, I'm recording the show, I may feel like I say something that may be a bit too harsh. And my goal is never to offend anyone. Um, at the same time, I keep it real. I give my opinion. But it's a little bit filtered, right? It's a little bit dressed up, so to speak. So that way it doesn't come off too crass or too harsh. Those Instagram live videos are unfiltered, unedited. Because I can't edit it on 
on. I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And it's, it's why I'm walking to work. So you'll you'll see me speaking to somebody. You'll hear a loud truck or bus go by. Uh, you'll kind of get a little uh, uh, peek into my uh, my life before work. So uh, uh, definitely tune into those. And you can tune into those later on YouTube. Feel free to just subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. But um, in the meantime, guys, I got to get going. Uh, duty calls. Get ready for work. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much for the wait. And I look forward to talking to you all in person and over the internet. As always, team, I'll keep talking if you'll listen. Take care.